Hey everyone, welcome to another Flutter tutorial. In this video, we'll be looking at a few things to consider when creating a brand new Flutter project for a team-based environment so that we might have a smooth process in getting our applications to production. So let's get right into it. I've already gone ahead and created this boilerplate Flutter project and the first thing that we want to consider is linting. Linting is very important, especially in team-based environment, because it provides a automated way of keeping our code consistent and clean by specifying rules and style guides that each developer must abide by. And by specifying these, the IDE will notify the developer when they are breaking those rules. Now for handling linting in Flutter, we use the analysis options that YAML file to configure our linting rules. So if we go here, we can see that the first thing here is that we have included those default Flutter linting rules from the Flutter lints package. And we can specify a few things that we want the Dart analyzer to abide by, where I have set the implicit cast to be false, implicit dynamic to be false, and also I have set that missing return should be error, and the missing required param should be error. I think as it is configured by default, the missing required param gives a warning, but here I want it to specify or to give an error. And so further down here, we can see where we configure our linting rules. Here we set up our own rules that we want our code base to abide by. So here I have set up this rule to prefer single quotes. And I have also set up a few more rules, like always specifying types. So to keep the type strict where there will be no vars, or any dynamics, but you must always specify the particular type. Now to get a list of those rules that the Dart analyzer interprets, we can head on over to dartlong.github.io slash linters. And there we find the different linting rules that the Dart analyzer will check for. Here we have a list of error rules, and as you can see, it's a long list. You can decide which you would configure for your projects. But if you select one of those rules, it will give you the information about that rule, and it will show you how to use that rule in your code, how to abide by that rule in your code. So as you can see, it gives the bad and it gives the good. So that's how you configure your linting rules for your Flutter project by using the analysis options YAML file. The second thing that I configure for my team is to set up some form of automation or CI pipeline. Now for my CI pipeline, I've chosen to use GitHub Actions. There are many options out there. There is Travis CI, there is Circle CI, and, and there, there are a lot of options that you can choose from. But I chose to use GitHub Actions because it is geared towards developer. It's developer friendly, and therefore it doesn't require any form of DevOps knowledge that some of the other CI tools required, for example, like Jenkins. So to set up my GitHub Actions, I create a GitHub folder. In that, I have another folder called Workflows. And that I, then I have a CI YAML file, which configures how my action will execute. And you can read further more about GitHub Actions on the GitHub website so that you can understand it more. But as you can see here, I have the name of my action, which is Flutter CI, and the on here represents on what event must this action be executed. 
this action will be executed on push to master or when there's a pull request made to master. And then the job section represents the actual job or commands that will be executed on the particular pull or push request. So I've configured my job here to execute automated testing. And this is very important in a team environment, especially when you're working in an agile environment. You want to have automated testing so that each developer, as they push their code, it's run against the automation to see if all the tests are passing before that code is merged into master. So here I have a step, which is my flutter test, and that the name here is to run the flutter test and analyze. The runs on here represents the particular virtual machine that I'll be running on. In this case, it will be an Ubuntu virtual machine. And then the steps involved in executing this job is that I'm first, I'm going to use a GitHub action called checkout. And what this action does is to check out the code that I'm currently running this test against or these set of jobs. And I'm going to set another action that it uses uh, Java version 12. Next, I use another action here, which has the flutter commands that are necessary to run the test. And here I'm saying, give me this flutter action from the stable channel with flutter version 2.5. And then we go ahead and run the different commands. First, I run the, the pub get command so that I get all my dependencies. And as you can see, the comments are listed here. Then I run the format here to format the code if there are any formatting issues. Then I run the analyzer here, and this is where it will run the analysis option, the Linton rules, to check against the code base to ensure that we are abiding by the rules that we have specified. And at any point, if any of these run fail, then the build will fail and the developer will be notified that there is something wrong with the code that they are trying to push. Now, the next thing in my process here is I want to generate code coverage. And code coverage is, it's, it's pretty important because it, it gives an idea of the percentage of the code base that is tested. And so, I am generating my code coverage test files by running a script. And this script is a script that I created. And the reason why I have this script is because as Flutter, how Flutter is right now, whenever you run tests with the coverage flag, it doesn't include files that you, you might have not imported. And so you might get a false representation of your test coverage if it doesn't include all the files. So in order to fix that situation, there is actually an open issue on GitHub that deals with that. And if we go to the end of the issue, we can see the workaround and the fix that we can copy and paste directly into our Flutter project and get that working. So that's exactly what I did. Copy and paste that into this import files shell script and that's executed here to generate the code coverage test files. After that, I run the tests with code coverage. If the test is passing full 100, then I go ahead and check that the code coverage is now above this, the, the percentage that we have set. And as you can see here, the percentage that I have set in this project is 88%. So at all times, our code coverage should be at least 88%. And that's the purpose of this script here. And I'm not going to go into the script, but what this script basically do is to generate the code coverage HTML file and then 
read that HTML file to get the coverage percentage from it, check if the percentage is, if the code coverage percentage is less than 88. And if that's the case, then we throw an error and exit, meaning we have not passed the test. So after we have checked for the code coverage, then what I do here is to upload this code coverage to the CodeCov website so that we can have that displayed. And if we head on over to CodeCov.com, and you, as you can see, this is my dashboard here, and it shows the test that the coverage that I recently uploaded. And as you can see, I have a 91% pass. And this is just for the boilerplate, of course, with the one test that comes with creating the Flutter project, the initial Flutter project. So this represents my CI pipeline. As you can see, this other section would represent the CD, which is to actually build the application and push it to some cloud storage where others can go and download the APK or the IPA file and test that, but I've not included that yet. I'm just including the CI itself. So if we should make a change to this now, say for example, I should set this to 100% and I should commit this code. If I should head over to GitHub now, and if I should go to actions, then I should see my action running right here. And you can select the action and look at the different steps as they are executed. You can see what's happening in the build and you can check that out. And as you can see, our build fails at the check code coverage percentage stage since we have set it to be 100% required coverage and it's only 91%. So that's less than 100%. So it would fail there. And so our build would fail and this code would not be pushed to our master branch. So if we go back to our pipeline here and change it back to 88% and let's push that again. So as you can see, my CI build ran to completion with no issues. And now if I go back to my code here and refresh, then you can see that my CI is passing and my code coverage is 92%. So those are two of the most important things that I would encourage you guys to consider when setting up your initial project flow if it involves a team. And even if it doesn't involve a team, if it's just you, it's good practice to set up these things. It helps your development time move faster um, and it helps you overall to become a better software and to write better code. So thank you guys for tuning in, for watching this video. I hope that you learned something and please like the video, subscribe. If it's your first time here, check out some of the other videos as we try to give videos to make you better Flutter developers and not just better coders, but better engineer altogether because all these things can be applied to any other language or any project that you guys decide to undertake. So thank you again for watching and see you in the next video.